BetOnline is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. BetOnline has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games. They can know your stuff. Get in on our $200,000 mega contest and pick five games against the spread every week for your choice of weekly prizes and a share of $200,000. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack, poker, or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. Welcome to Believe in Falcons. I'm your host, Ove Mahaley, my co-host, Michael Turner. And since we're keeping with the running back thing, we, we wanted to get, you know, one of the greatest running backs in Falcons franchise history, Jamal Anderson, to the show. Jamal, brother, I watched you, not when I was a, a kid, because we ain't that much apart, but I watched you growing up, and I think every Falcons player – has wanted to do the Dirty Birds because it's an iconic dance. You're an iconic running back. You used to bowl over people. People say you and Mike are like, you know, you know, I don't know, fraternal twins. Like, you're not the same. But you're both like the same running style. You're both big backs. Both, you know, bowled over people, go through the A gap. We're excited to have you on here because fans have been asking us, you know, when you getting, you know, Jamal on? He, he's the original Dirty, Dirty Bird. You can't have a Believe in Falcon show without Jamal Anderson. So fans, listeners, we got him. We got him here. And we got you on a good week. Last week, it was rough. You, you'd have to kind of twist your words a little bit to stay positive. You have to kind of be like, well, you see what had happened was when Kirk did that and when the team lost against a backup, what really they were doing, nah, we, we're not bringing you on for that. We're bringing you on off a victory against one of the top teams, man. So give us your thoughts, your initial thoughts as a Falcons fan. You've been out and about the city. Well, I'll, I'll say this. Look, I think it was last week's show, Mike, when you said, don't freak out, don't panic, it's only week one. I right. was like, I wholeheartedly agreed with that. Now, right. listen, I was doing appearances. I was at the game. Obviously, it was a crazy atmosphere. We know there's going to be a lot of Steelers fans, but it, it was still terrific energy. And right. so – I think like, you know, people were just like disappointed that it didn't click like at home week one, you know, so I kind of got it. But I I was also of the of the, you know, the mindset where it's like it's a long season, man. It is a long season. And if you start like tripping that hard off off a week one game, I mean, you know, look what happened in week two, which is fantastic. And I was tweeting this, tweeting this out because I mean. I mean, they did a pet rally for the Eagles. You know? <laughs> it was like we weren't even in the game, and right, I'm like, right, right. I got it. You know, Kelsey's coming back. Kelsey's on ESPN. Kelsey right. called out his other teammates. They right. had a whole sea of green. It was like, man, um, it was we were we were on our own, man. And I really, we were, were afterthought. Ain't, ain't nobody think about the Falcons. Yeah, no, it was okay. crazy, man. And, and, you know, hey, we got to win. And that's why I feel like, you know, I'll be so happy when they get to a point where it's like back. To, no, you know, we got a long season, but right. it was very exciting to have that game. It was awesome. You know, we're three running backs. It was so awesome to see uh, Bijan uh-huh. uh, and also uh, uh, Tyler, you know. Um, yeah. And so my, that was my thing. I actually had a tweet. Um, I tweeted out. If, you know, if we do this thing right, man, that's that's literally Lindell White and Reggie Bush. You know what yeah. I mean? It was a hell of a, and I was like, if we do this thing right, you know, because those two guys, I mean, it was one of those things. I was in the pros, um, and I went there to like, I was like, I wanted to see. Um, no, I was. This was after. This is after I was playing. I went to the USC game just because what you saw on the field and the combination between the two of them, you know. And so it was so great to see uh, Algiers and uh, obviously Bijan is a fantastic talent. And then, you know, Saquon is a monster. Uh, wow. He's one of my fa- he's a, one of my favorite running backs. Mine too. In the league, and, I mean, you just when you see a guy like you know who's our size, but he's so dang explosive. Right, Mike, you could roll, no question about it. You shot, you surprised me, and when you, you and know, me. When you, and, and me. I mean, yeah, when you, when you rolled out when you scooted. I think the first time I really saw it when you um when you came in in San Diego and you broke one out, I was like, oh no, he, he my man can move, yeah. <laughs> bro. When we signed you, it was so critical because we had a rookie quarterback and you came in and you got the way you guys played and how you guys balanced that whole thing out and made it. I mean, didn't we go to the playoffs the first year? Yeah, first year. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. 
admit you know, it. Look at me. You know I know. Right, right. <laughs> you know I, I know. He was running back was back in that day, but whoever yeah. he was, he came into the playoffs in a minute. Right. Yeah. Right. So I was like, we it wasn't just wasn't the consistency, and you guys really changed that. But right. so that was exciting for me uh, to see that the the way they were both being utilized in week two. And you right. know, I tried to remind people as well, and uh, everybody has an opinion about this. And I get it where you don't get a tremendous amount of starters in the preseason, but I mean, we had guys that didn't play at all. Right. And That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah, right. Is, you know, it, even it's the preseason and you know, we, we know it goes like the preseason and it turns up or back when we played really, you know, that third preseason game was no joke. And right. you were out right. like a half. It was Only like three quarters. some teams, three quarters. Right. And it was like, you, this is, this is going to be the dry run and you know, you didn't want people to get hurt, but like this is how this is what, what, what it, it was. It. Yeah, so it's so I was also of that presence in mind last week. Like, how are we gonna look? We haven't all been on the field at the same time, right. and we're playing against a hell of a defense, you know what I mean? Right. And listen, I like that Kurt was honest and talked about that he intentionally wasn't moving as well in the pocket and stuff. And I don't think you saw it was like a you could see week two was so so different. And oh, so yeah. I love the fight. I love that last drive. I thought he put it together really, really well. And then their energy was on point and they blocked everything out and went to work. And that's what you got to do in this league, you know? Right. So, so Obi, yeah. the ball is on my side. Preseason is important. It is. Yeah, it is. You got, we got to get yeah. that dry run. You got to, it, it, it's something about that preparation during preseason that will help your team out in the long run. Yeah. You know I'm man? telling you right now, it's funny. Cause obviously, uh, you know, we just played the Steelers and um it was uh it was that like big preseason game and we were playing Pittsburgh in West Virginia. Right. So we were not going to West Virginia because the Falcons were selling out that stadium. You know what right. I mean? Right. <laughs> we were going we were going to Steel Country, right? And and D- the Reeves came up to us and he was like, How you feel? And I knew what, what it was. Now remember that that Steelers defense was no joke. Right. And he was like if you come out this first quarter, this first series, and you go off, he said, I'll pull you. Right. 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 The, I had Steelers players to this day that would tell me it was like it was like a playoff game. <laughs> I, you know, I was running downhill, all the cuts. Oh. I was in I, bro, I must have had I think I had like 50, 50 yards or something in the first boom. I'm out. Right. Yeah. I was so yep. excited about it. I mean, who do you know? They they they're just known to to be a certain physical football team. So yeah. I was glad to see him bounce back because the Philadelphia Eagles are no joke either. You know, right? That's what I'm saying. So I was going like going into Philly after they already like didn't look good against Green Bay, right? Hostile environment, right? We still ain't got our chemistry together like yet, and like it's like no. how are we gonna win this game? Monday night national TV. Ooh, yeah. Every, everything's know. against the Falcons. Everything's against the Falcons. Right. And I was on, I did, uh, yeah, we did. And I, I did, uh, I did Hugh Douglas show pregame and <laughs> you know, man, they were out oh, there. Boo, boo, boo. You know, so they were all gassed up, but I talked about it. I mean, you know, obviously no AJ Brown, but I feel like, I don't know what happened like some point last year. And I talked about this on Hugh's show. It's like something, something happened with something's going on with Jalen and I don't know what's, the, what's not being communicated or because right, 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 he's right. not, I mean, when they started off like gangbusters last year and you remember they ended up uh, losing um, to Tampa Bay in, in a humbling fashion for a team that started off so strong. And so it was just a weird deal. And I don't know what's going on. I'm a big Jalen hurts fan. He's a terrific young man. And so, you know, it's one of those guys you, you like to see play well, you know, cause he does everything right. And it's, um, so I would like to see him play well. I just, I just don't you know. I don't, not necessarily against us, but you know, he can play well all, all, all he right. wants. Not against us because we might see him in the playoffs later on. <laughs> right. Right. So go, go crazy and tell us, us. But Jamal, I want to get your take on the game coming up because yes. a lot of people didn't think we could beat the Eagles, and now yeah. people are like maybe they can beat the Chiefs. They're the Super Bowl champions. Is this a fluke? What happened last game? Because granted, if Saquon didn't give us that chance. We'd be talking about a different story about an 0 2 team. So Saquon not only gave us a chance, but we took advantage of it. But yeah, we, you still have them. we can't be waiting on people to mess up for us to have a chance to win. Can we put it all together against the Chiefs and actually get a W? 
Yeah, I think, and you guys know this as well as me, it's tough to win on the road in this league, okay? Yeah. It is really tough to win in Philadelphia, okay? Right. That is yeah. a very energized crowd. They are, I mean, you know, depending on which fan base comes in there, I mean, they went at my grandparents one time in that place, man, and we would never forgot it. But it's like that's a very tough place to play. Right. It's a crazy atmosphere. They're always going to be sold out. They're always going to be loud. They're always going to be hyper. And so it's, it is a, it isn't an, an advantage. And so I give credit anytime you go on the road. But then different things happen during the course of the game. And then when offense came through and put that that consequential drive together, I thought, okay, this is what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Because when you got to do it on the road against a good football team or a team that, you know, for the most part, everybody has predicted to to go to the playoffs. So, listen, Kansas City Chiefs are one of the – I mean, listen, <laughs> what – Back to back to, I mean, they're 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 the Super Bowl champs. Right. It's a football team that it's like, if the game is close, they just find ways, man. They find ways. I think it will be excellent. Uh, obviously, coming in here early in the season, uh, you know, they travel pretty well. I think it's going to be a great atmosphere for the game. I would be thrilled to be playing against them coming off of that Monday Night Football game, right. and it's like. <clears throat> you go in there and do what you got to do. Then you beat a team like Kansas City and, you know, the the momentum, the momentum that you continue to build for the team and then the outlook, the positive outlook that it will be for the team, particularly beating the Super Bowl champs. You know, it's not going to be an easy football game. Listen, yeah. Patrick, Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. For, OK, dude finds a way and he makes it very, very difficult he gives his team chances to be in the football game at all times, and now he has weapons again. Okay, right, right, and so right, it's right. like, you know, we're not gonna face we're not gonna face Isaiah Pacheco, but I uh, I don't know if they signed Kareem Hunt or I know Kareem Hunt was possibly gonna be coming in there to be re-signed, and he knows the system very very well. He could he if he's in good shape, he'll jump in right away. Right. So I wouldn't look at him as any slouch whatsoever because he's been in that system already you know and you know you get a chance to go back to kc man it's like you're gonna be extra spicy you're gonna be really ready to go right, because right. It's, you know it's obviously perennially i mean they've been the, they won they won the super bowl man they are a very tough team who constantly believes regardless of the situation that they can win you know and you have to match that level of intensity if you plan to get there so it'll be it'll be fun and i'm looking i'm looking forward to them having this game especially after the way they played against the eagles so yeah. you, you I, know I, what i mean I, I like the momentum factor that was yeah. a big monday night yes and raheem yes. rallied troops once again yes now we we played we beat a team that was in the super bowl and lost mm. and now we're playing a team that's back to back champs Mm. Sunday night prime time here. Woo. This is this is this is big. Rocking. This is yeah. big. I don't, I don't people realize this is big for this team, big for the direction of the Raheem as far as yeah. like who are who are we gonna be? You know what right. I'm saying? Like are, are we gonna step up to the play? It could be a tough it, we gotta look good Sunday night. I ain't say we gotta win. Yeah, we gotta look, we gotta look good. We gotta yeah. look damn good for like to even you, you can build a momentum off a loss, right? Mm-hmm. Like some people, like all right, we 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 toe to toe with the back to back champs. We lost, but we we had them, or you know, we know it's, it's certain games that that we know. Like, man, we're we're we we, we might not be I this. Mean, game, I understand. We know, what you're yeah. We're close to them. You know what I'm saying? Aren't, people aren't going to be so furious if this, you lose by like you know one, two, three points or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, but we try to win. Yeah, yeah, both, yeah, we gotta win. I'm, I'm, I'm going for the big swing. I'm going for the big swing. I'm not saying that. I'm not. You know what I'm saying, but like, we gotta look good, though. We gotta look good. We gotta look good. And this is yeah. it's prime for us to beat them. That's like they got Pacheco's gone. Like, and we're we 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 gotta keep the ball rolling. Fifteen. That, 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 that leads me to you, Jamal. I got a question for you. Like in '98, yeah. yeah. Going into the season, did y'all think? You, you know, we all say we Super Bowl champs on the board, division champ. Like what? At what moment was like? All right, we can really be special. So, in '97, 
that that was basically the same team. We did pick up like Brooking and Tim Dwight, a couple other little pieces, which were really really big for us. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I just happened to throw in Brooking anyway. I, I, uh, I played with him. You played with him. Shows how long he's been playing. He played with both. Yeah, no, nah, that man was no joke. That man and that and that right. dude could roll. We used to have battles in practice. It was fun. Right. But um, that in, in '97, I almost man, I almost broke my ankle. The first game of the season against the Detroit Lions, and I remember, uh, like, there was a big SI article talking about, oh, he's in Reeves offense, he's he might lead the league in rushing, and I was like, whoa, I had come off a big season in '96, which was dope, but uh, yeah, I got jacked up, and I remember, <laughs> me and Barry Sanders had mirror statistics, bro. And I, <laughs> wow! I didn't realize it. Yeah, yeah, tell me about this because I I don't know I don't know nothing about no, this. It, it was not good statistics. It was like oh my good <laughs> No, 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 no. I it's got Barry jacked up. Like, wow. Yeah, Barry hmm. got jacked up too. But it, it was funny because I was really hurt. Like I jacked my ankle up. But man, we, I had like a hand spar was a rookie. He just wasn't kind of ready to take over. And so I like fought to just kind of continue to play, but I was not healthy until like week five or six, man. Barry went off. He had another bad game and then he went off. And that's when he had 2000 yards that year. Okay. I didn't really start rolling until the second half of the season, but we, we started off. Was it one or two and two and six? Yeah, I think it was that. We or no, maybe it was one in seven, bro. We started off one in seven, wow. and then we got by the time we got to Arizona, I was rolling. I was we were a machine. We had we figured out the offense. I got used to Bobby Christian. I've never had a fullback in front of me. Mm-hmm. So when they put Bobby Christian, no, 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 Obi, no Obi in front of you. No, but I mean, <laughs> Bobby, hey, Bobby Christian is that dude. I, I realized that I realized that midway through the season after I got healthier and we kind of, I mean, the terminology of Dan's system, it was just so much from what we had come from in the run and shoot. Our plays were like four words, 60s ego sale break. I mean, Dan is like trip rights, uh, a 48 ride Nero Trey. Like what? <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like a whole nother language we we mm-hmm. were we had to learn. But we didn't really, man, it just we didn't start clicking until then. But I say this to say that team, if we wouldn't have lost to Arizona, we could have probably made the playoffs and we would have had the greatest turnaround in NFL history from mm-hmm. one and seven to seven and one in the second half of the season. Mm-hmm. And we ended up losing the heartbreaker to Arizona. And we, you know, it was like, oh, we're out. Now we're going to be out. But we had a chance, bro, which was crazy. Well, that team was the same team in 98 with a couple of more pieces. Mm-hmm. And once we got Tony Martin, oh, forget about it. Terrence and Tony, <laughs> I try to remind people all the time. Obviously, you know, I had a crazy season. But I had two wide receivers who both averaged over 17 yards, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, What? I mean, they averaged over 17 yards per catch with double-digit touchdowns. I mean, Chris Chandler threw a fantastic bomb. So all of this, all of these things coming together was just, you know, I mean, OJ was a rookie, but he was a stud at the tight end for a freakish talent, 6'7", like what? So it just, everything came together to where we had all these pieces that were working and everybody was healthy and you couldn't even, I mean, we were like, Man, some games, bro, we'd be like, we coming over here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Crazy. Wow. You can, you can stop. I don't know. Because I was I remember we were playing against the Dolphins, man. They were talking so especially crazy to me. You know the boys from Florida. I'm you know, to them. <laughs> they was on me. Right, was, right. <laughs> okay. I said, okay, okay. Right. So I was extra motivated to chew them up. And I was out of the game before the fourth quarter. I had like 140 on them. And I was like, I did one play so disrespectful just to remind them. So like I broke out and came back and I cut um, the linebacker was coming. <laughs> did the little cut on him and it went up the field. Bro, I'm looking at the Jumbotron and the safety is running behind me. And I put the ball out. And when he dove to the side, he dove to. I'm watching him. I went. 
<laughs> you, you're lucky you got like a one second delay on that jumbo try. You're like, I'm no, good, I'm good. No, ah. no I promise you, I'm watching. He he not gonna catch me. He wasn't gonna catch me. It was a touchdown. But I let him run up so he could dive so I could switch arm as soon as he did because he thought I wasn't looking. I'm looking dead at the jumbo time. After, when you see the replay, you're like, oh, that's what the dude said on the TV. He's looking at the – because they probably thought, you know, at first, what is he doing, you know? Right. I, I mean, I'm, and then I dance so on so, so you believe, like, the next year, coming in 90, y'all feel – y'all, were y'all talking Super Bowl or were y'all talking about let's just get better? Like, like No, but we, we were so – we were so frustrated that we it took so long for us to kind of get going, and I I, I put some I put some of that on me um, because I had the second half of the season I had I was tearing people up, but um yeah it was a trip, but we felt really 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 good and we had great camps and stuff. Man, if I wouldn't have got hurt in two thousand and one, I'm telling you right now, I think we would have just some damage that year too. Right, right, right. But it was just. Yeah, I mean the, the culture. That's that's the thing because like yeah. me and Mike have been a part of teams that they have all the talent in the world. You know, right. we had everything we felt like we needed to, but it's a it's really important to have the culture. Like the yeah, you know, the end season, Mike. We lost to Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers first Super Bowl. We had Tony Gonzalez, like Hall of Famer. We had Roddy White, Julio Jones. You know, we had eleven Pro Bowl players, and we were stacked. Like there's a Pro Bowl player on every position on offense from. Right tight ends, the receivers, to the fullback, the tailback. And we had, we're, we're, we're winning it this year. But, you know, and, and the culture was 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 really good, but it just didn't work out. Like, your run, how did the culture make it to where it got all that talent, it got all those great position players, and it took y'all to the place that me and Mike had never seen, and we would love to go to the Super Bowl, because this Falcons yeah. team wants to go there. Right. Yeah. I tell you what, we – um and it's crazy because we we definitely and I remember saying this a couple of times, like I'm having a great season, but like Garrison Hurst was on my neck. He was having, <laughs> yo, on my neck. I mean, you gotta think about it, bro. Like Barry's still there. You're all right, Emmett, right. Like Emmett's still there. You know yeah, what I mean? Like the yeah, the you know, the players of the decade are still right. there. Okay. And so it's like, you know, these were the battles, and I I used to love uh, I used to love going to Detroit and battling against them. I had great games against them because I wasn't, you know, I was like, shit, I'm playing against the best. Yeah. I want him. I'm not, I'm never going to be him, but right. I, I can do some that. I can move too. You oh, know? Right, 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 so right. I would always have, I mean, I look, I mean, we went up there in 98 and, um, uh, you know, cl- clinched the division up there and I had a monster run in the end and then ran over their, their defensive tackle and put it in the end zone. Mm-hmm. Bye bye. You know, <laughs> hey. right, now speaking of speak that, speak that, speak that, speak that, now, now speaking of that, now speaking of that, literally this morning, I was signing autographs for people for a company and they asked me, Mike, have you ever did the dirty bird? Wise? I was like, no, I never did that because I was like, <laughs> first, I didn't never practice it or anything like that, but it was like, but yeah. that was, was like, that's, that's, them era. that's 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 them. That wasn't like, I, like, you could have cleaned up. Yeah, it was, it was like, fan how much to you? Maybe I would have did it, but like you know, yeah. but that wasn't my thing. I was like, no, that's the, that's that's that, that's the ninety eight. I, I thought you were gonna break my Russian record, and I was like, if he decide to dance after he break the record, I'm like, <laughs> <I'm, I'm, I'm, laughs> I will get hold that. On, hold on, hold on, hold on, Jamal. But you was there. You was there. You was on the sideline one game in two thousand eight. Yeah. I always yeah. want to ask you this question: Were you at the game just? Just coincidence, or were you there because I was about to break the touchdown record? Mm. The single single touchdown record. Yeah, Uh-oh. yeah, yeah. I was there. I, f- I think it was. Oh, that's a good question. Did I know that then? Right. I don't know if I knew that because I think me, Warwick, uh, Bob, and all of us were there. That's crazy. Okay, what did you get? How many touchdowns? 17? 17, you're right. How many you had them all? No, nah, I got I, I was pulled out of multiple games. So oh, no, I, no, no, no. there we go. The truth comes out. The truth comes out. I no, I had, I had, you got pulled I out of games. I had, like that. I you had six sideline. You were on the sideline. You was on the sideline. Yeah, yeah. Were you were were you there? Because I, 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 I was like, man, he gonna break my ru- Russian record first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was like, you don't need to dance, my guy. You, you, 
But Obi did, Obi did the dance. Did you know I, that? I mean, yes. Yeah, I see. The problem is I don't have as much rhythm as I think I have. In my head, I, I'm 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 the best dance in the world. Like I, you tell my wife, I'm I'm out there. I go to the club. I'm I'm doing all things. Like stop, stop. Just, just don't do it. So I couldn't think of anything to do. And I, I think it was the Panthers or something. I, I did one of those things where everyone runs to the right. You know, Matt did a boot, and I got a touchdown against the Panthers. I tried to do my dirty bird. I got like one pump, two pump, and then Matt came ruining my celebration. My yeah. moment, I never get as a fullback. I get like my whole dirty bird dance in, do the, the flaps. Couldn't even get to the flap. No flaps. Zero flaps. You know, and <laughs> Matt Ryan jumps up, and we do a little, you know, hit, hit, hit bump, and it was cool, but like – Every Falcons player, you see it again and again and again, pay homage to you because it's it's real simple, but it became yeah. part of the right. Falcons right. franchise and part of the celebratory nature of us. And hopefully this team gets back to their winning ways and do way more Dirty Birds before. Yeah, but I know. We, we, that was hard when Jesse Bates did it to close out that game. Woo, that was oh, strong. Oh, oh, so, so, people, so current players are doing it. Oh, Jesse yeah. Bates did it after he got that pick. He ran down I mean, there. Yeah. I didn't Wake see that. Finest. Wake Forest Finest. Yeah. It, 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 it got to be. And by the way, Jamal, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're in your collegiate Hall of Fame. I know Mike's in his NIU Hall of Fame. Uh, my team, Wake Forest, just put your boy in the Sports Hall of Fame uh, yesterday. So, you know, uh, it, it, it's something to be said that now I can be on you guys' level. Because before, I'm just like, man, it sure is nice. <laughs> Congratulations. I got recognized as a fullback. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, Tim Duncan, you know, Arnold Palmer, Chris Paul, over Mayle. Yeah, we're all, all same level, even though I'm, I'm – yeah. Hold on. Do not put your name in the same sense as Tim Duncan. And, and I didn't do it. They put it. They put my name in there. I said, oh, yeah, well, hey, Tim Duncan and Arnold Palmer, hey, you guys are way too good. You should create another – Hall of Fame A, Hall of Fame B. You and Hall of Fame yeah, B. Yeah, that's Tim why Duncan. I said but they <laughs> want to be in the same category. still in the Hall of Fame with them. Bravo. Right? So hey, you know, don't, I'm, I'm, don't miss Tim Duncan first. Say other people lead up to Tim Duncan. It sounds better with Tim Duncan. It sounds like <laughs> Tim Duncan, Chris Paul, Oprah Mahaley, all these Hall of Fame Wake Forest guys. Yeah, yeah, I'll I'll tell, give, give us up to Tim Duncan. Give us up to Tim Duncan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, before we get about, Duncan, yeah, yeah, you deserve you. it. You deserve it. I appreciate you it, Duncan, man. You ain't Tim Duncan. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll leave that alone. But before we get you out, Jamal, I got one last question. Yeah. That Mike got a question. Um. If and there's a lot of things that you could name, but if you could name one thing that the Falcons need to do to beat the Kansas City Chiefs, what would it be? I mean, I think uh, it's of critical importance to eliminate mistakes. You can't play a team like Kansas City and put yourself in a situation where you're turning over the ball. Obviously, they have one of the best defensive linemen in all the football. He will be a challenge. He is constantly a challenge. He creates havoc for them on the defensive side of the ball. So I think, you know, making sure, uh, you know, I got, you know, thank God Chris Lindstrom is a stud, but this, yeah. this guy's no joke, you know? So I feel like that's, those are, those are very, very critical plays and, you know, making sure the, uh, the one thing I really liked about what happened Monday night is you saw um, all of the talented people have a chance to make a play in a situation. And they did, you know, yep. I really, really love Kyle, uh, Kyle, excuse me, Kyle Pitts. Um, I'd love to see him um, become more of a factor in the offense. I think what he presents skill wise and how big he is, is dangerous. The Drake London, I'm a big fan of. I think he's a tough guy who's continue to get, who continues to get better and works really hard. And obviously we talked about Bijan and, and Tyler Algier. Um, I think, you know, continuing to find ways to make sure they both get the ball because they're both very talented guys and they bring different things to the table. I mean, sometimes, you know, you, that, that that battering ram ain't no joke. Mm -hmm. And he puts a, and he puts a certain presence out there too, you know? Yeah. And now B. John runs hard too. Don't get me wrong. Right. But like, Man, Tyler would be out there dropping them shoulders, man. Right, right, so right, right. I like I like to see I like to see where he was not a forgotten cog, especially on the road there. Right. So just use utilizing all of our guys and you can't, you know, like I said, when you play in a team as good as they are, who is who is as confident as they are, you cannot make it easy for them, you know? Absolutely. Uh, I think the energy is gonna be fantastic in the stadium. Oh man. Um, you know, I feel like you know, they're there's going to be a 
strong sense to not want to have a, a repeat of what, what, what happened with Pittsburgh, but you got to bring it, you know, they're the Super Bowl champs for a reason. They come to play. So you, you got to have a, you got to bring your A game, but what a great opportunity, you know? Absolutely. Right. So my question is more for the fans to, to, cause I'm like, I, cause I've been getting on Ovi. Ovi so up and so down each week. Like, <laughs> The season was over last. The season was over last week, according to Ovi. It's over. Go home. Back up. <laughs> you Who's know, going back up. Who does that? You know, it was over last week. Then, then, then we win against the Eagles. Now you're talking about Super Bowl. Go to Super Bowl. We're gonna win it all. Let's go. So that's why. <laughs> that's why you're the perfect guest, Jamal. Because I want. Yeah. That's why I actually like, like, like through the course of September. Like, I, that's why I asked you earlier. Like, did y'all really feel Super Bowl was a real like? legitimate goal to have or like 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 how do you calm the fans down let's just let the be patient with them. let's let us figure some things out because y'all knew y'all had to figure some things out because right. you said the year before y'all put some things together towards the end and it's like yeah. okay we'll be better yeah we started up we it was funny because in 98 we started off really well and then we went to san francisco and they had you know they're in our at that time they're in our division they had um, been uh, huh Dominating, they've been dominating the division. I mean, come on, Steve Young, Jerry, yeah. don't make me go down the list. All right, 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 right. Brian Young, Stubblefield, man, they had yeah. Ken Norton. Um, yeah, so it was a, it had always been a, a tough place for us to play, you know. Yeah. And so that's when they still, you know, were at Candlestick, bro. And I remember we went out there and did not play well in the first half, and Terrence Mathis went, but she never. I don't I played with Terrence, I think six years, maybe, maybe my whole career. I don't know. But I never saw him do this before or since. Mm -hmm. He snapped in that locker room and we bounced back. We ended up losing to San Francisco, but it was such a sting that when they came to town, we had like inside the NFL. It was the big game at that point because we had we we were rolling and they were rolling. And we we felt we were waiting for them. Like that's how that's how we were. We we were like, even though we knew who they were, we were like, we cannot wait for y'all to get here. It was like we had like that. We had like an Ali mentality. Swear yeah. to swear to God, bro. Yeah. And so that's why we were so. I mean, you know, we battled hard in practice, but like, yeah, I I do a thing that I got from Coach Reeves really where I I break up the season into quarters, man. Yeah. So at the end of this month, I'll make an assessment and see where we are, what oh. we look like injury-wise. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it is a long season, as you guys know. And I'm like, so, you know, regardless of what happens, you know, uh, in the next game, I'll, I'm will i going to look at the totality of what has occurred in this first quarter and then be like, let me see. All right, this is what we need to work on. And if we, you know, we might, hell, we might go on a run and, you know, be three and one, four and one. And so yeah. – <clears throat> you know, it's a lot of football to be played. Right. So, so, no, so the bottom line is, no matter what, be patient. We can yeah. week out. Yeah. Unless don't, don't be we, yelling at football because we two and one. No. Super Bowl, let's go. Super Bowl, let's go. <laughs> yeah. We're going to win it all. Let's go. You're right. Don't say we're gonna miss the playoffs. We one and two. Like, yeah. like it's a long season. I, I week get it. Week. I get it. I get it. I get it too because we've. uh you know, we've had a we've had a little we've had a tough patch for yeah. the past couple of years, and it's been right. frustrating. And right. so it's right. like, yeah, everybody's excited that right. you know. I feel yeah. like everybody's like genuinely, hey, we got a we got a squad that that can do some things, you know. Yeah, 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 good. So like, like, but this is what I want. I want the Benz Dome to be electric. You know, yeah, what I'm saying? yeah. Like, I agree. Ever, ever since we moved there, we we haven't been good. And the crowd hasn't been let because we haven't had a good product out there. I know. Yeah. I think this is the season where we can like, all right, let's get a real home field advantage, and it's up to the fans to show up and, and show out and be loud. No doubt. I mean, I mean like, yeah, we had a Georgia Dome rocking. You had a Georgia Dome rocking. We had a Georgia Dome rocking. Right. right. Mercedes been right. hasn't been rocking since. You know what I'm saying? Yet okay. there hasn't been a season where the Mercedes Benz been rocking. Right. This I mean, year we're going to be rocking. I was hopeful, but. You know, it was gonna be it was gonna be a little rough stretch last year, you know, and uh, I don't think that I think it'll be better. I think it'll be more energized. Um, I feel like the people who come are coming to the games are really really hyped hyped up, you know. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. I feel like 
we you know Pittsburgh Steelers travel. That's the best. Right. Okay. Right. They, 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 Dallas they, they, fan base too. Right. Yeah. They, we got them. We got them later this year. Yeah. I mean, good right. game. We got a good game. But like I'm saying, we we need to have this home field advantage though. We need to be rocking though. Sunday. Yeah. Uh, Sunday no, night. Sunday right. night. Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta show out. Atlanta show out. Please. <laughs> y'all heard Mike. Y'all heard Mike. Yeah, uh, yeah. Atlanta's gonna show out. I, I, I can't wait for the game. It's gonna be one of the hardest tickets to get, especially after how we definitely, definitely. ended up the Eagles game and prime time to prime time. They used to say back in the day, Kirk can't play in prime time. That narrative is, is, is killed. And, and yeah. Kirk's gonna keep on showing up for prime time games, man. And we want to thank you, Jamal, for showing up for us, man. We, we you guys. the best guests. We got a litany of Falcons legends, and and you're yeah. one of them. So. Being one of our first legends, come on here and bless the Believing Falcons podcast. We uh, uh we can't say I thank you, you guys. Yeah, my sure. pleasure, guys. My pleasure. Yeah. Take care. All right, you too, man. And we want to thank Jamal freaking Dirty Bird Anderson uh for coming onto the show, being one of our first Falcon legends to bless the pod. Uh, Mike, you and him, like I said, fraternal twins, y'all, y'all both two light skinned out, 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 <laughs> out there running big and, and knocking people over. But yeah. Jamal had a lot of great things to say about the culture necessary for the Super Bowl, about, you know, the, the type of players he had and the type of coaching. But really, I love what he was saying about what needs to happen in order to win. The team has to come together. People have to show up. We have to spread the ball around. Mm-hmm. I always say your stars have to be stars. We can't have the guys who are getting paid, who are drafted high, not performing. And we didn't have that. You know, we even had guys step up, Darnell Moody to Ray Ray to – Kyle Pitts showing that we can have people from all over our team step up and help us win games. So I, I'm excited about Monday night. I mean, about Sunday night. Uh, I'm excited to be in prime time again. You mentioned, Jamal mentioned, we got to get that stadium rocking. got to get the Ben Stadium rocking because they are starved for a team that can get the fans excited. Home games recently have been more away games. Uh, it's I know Atlanta's a, a town where we got people from all over the place, so that kind of makes it hard to – have just Atlanta fans, but we usually have as much of the away team as the home team. I mean, you've been going to the games as alumni, and the mm-hmm. stands like, "Wow, this is a this is a home game, right?" And, you know, you'll see terrible towels there. You'll see all types of colors, except for ours. But I think things are changing this year, man. What 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 are your thoughts about this upcoming game? And you know, building off what Jamal said, how can we get a W in this Sunday night, you know, uh, event? Well, first I want to say is like a home game means nothing without the fans. Yeah, you know what I'm saying to us, it's it just the color color uniform we wear. Yeah, part players, but we need to we need the fans, we need that energy to make it a home game. You know what I'm saying to make it feel like home. So I'm gonna start out with that. But then, uh, what we need to do to win? I think I think the Chiefs are the new Patriots, man. That's yeah. like you can't, make, you can't you cannot make a mistake against them. Like they will exploit every mistake you make. And and people say it's luck. People that's how we get the NFL is rigged. <laughs> got the, we, got the we got the Swifties fans, you know, so everything everything is going in their favor as far as like why the NFL loves the Chiefs so much, but like we gotta take it out of their hands. And it's like us making plays, making the correct making the correct calls and executing every play that's that's called, you know what I'm saying? To do it our best of our abilities. Cause we are a talented team. We just we're a younger team. Yeah. And we wanna see like who's gonna step up. Cause all the stuff you, you can't depend on one guy to win big games. You know what I'm saying? You, you, it, it takes a total team effort to win big games like on Sunday night. Like last Monday, it wasn't one guy that, that won that game. No. It was it was from the coaches on down that won that game. And so it's like we need that same effort again. And I, I believe Raheem can can rally the troops once again and get us on that same page. Just be on the same page. And, and just, let's see what we got. Let's yeah. get us off that spot. Yeah, and so the, the thing that's – it has me excited, but it also has me a little bit worried is that the Chiefs – don't look, look like the Chiefs. You know, all, all the stats say that in the first two games last year, Patrick Mahomes had twice as many touchdowns. You know, Travis Kelsey only has four catches, for like 40-something yards. Like, the Chiefs aren't cheaping, but they still find a way to win. They're right. coming off the momentum of a game that people say they should have lost, but they won. We're coming off the momentum of a game that we sh- definitely should have lost, but we found a way to, to win. Mm-hmm. I don't want the Chiefs to go into, you know, playoff mode against us i don't want travis kelsey to get back on track or you know patrick Holmes get back on track against us because they're still figuring things out i don't know what's wrong but they're, they're not at the level that we expect the chiefs to typically be in and now with their 
their workhorse, Pacheco being out. You know, Jamal talked about Cream Hunt. I haven't checked as of now of who they got as a running back, but right. Pacheco being gone gives us that much more of a chance to get this win. Just like AJ being gone for the Eagles, it, it may not have made a huge difference, but it made enough to where we were right. able to keep it close and able to actually get a W. So we have to keep the Chiefs where they are right now. Still trying right. to figure out who they are, how to operate, not running on all cylinders. If we give them an opportunity, any at all, mm-hmm. they're going to go back to what they know, which is excellence and operating at a high level. But I feel really, really good about our defense. I feel right. really good about what we've done. I feel like we're getting better, you know, every single game. And so if there's ever a Falcons defense that can keep Patrick Mahomes at bay and allow him not to go off, it, it's ours right, right now. I feel right. very confident about it. And if there's ever an offense, I feel like if we can build off what we did in that two minute drive, because like we mentioned in the last show, second half Kirk Cousins, that's the guy we paid for. That's the guy I was excited about. That's a hundred million dollar quarterback. Uh, right. the, the first six quarters of Kirk's Falcons tenure, it was nothing to call home about. No, no one was too excited. People were actually starting to get a little bit upset. You say, Oh, we don't get too high, too low. Not me, but the fans were already <laughs> saying, Hey, that uh that Penix guy, let's let's see, give him a shot. Okay, right. Not, right, 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 not, right, right. Not gonna right. happen. But right. The fact that you're even making those 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 calls for him show that we want results we, we we want to the guy to be the guy and he showed us that he he can do that now he has to prove that that wasn't a fluke like some people are saying that's who i am that's that's kirko cousins like I'm, I'm here and this is going to be day in day out game in game out the level of excellence you're getting from the quarterback position right no man, like that's people that just, just don't understand kirk though look, like look, he's look, been doing his whole career what he did last week is was not shocking kirk had big big moments and big playoff moments where he threw a last second touchdown to Stephon Diggs against New Orleans. Yep. And for them to advance in the playoffs. Like he has his moments of being great. It's just like the people just don't know him. And they ready, they ready, like, why did we draft him? Or why do we pay him all this money and then draft the quarterback after them? It's all that confusion, that nonsense that calm down, trust Terry. Relax. Like relax. Relax. Everybody needs to relax. Relax. Relax and breathe. But that's the thing. That's and that's another thing about Sunday night. Keep our composure. That's nothing that, like, as a team, this is another heightened game. We playing against super, back-to-back Super Bowl champs. We got to keep our composure. Don't be too – you know how, how you can be too hyped for a game yeah. and you're tired? Yeah. yeah you, you know, you're exhausted. I was, I was like, oh, man, I was too hyped for this game. I, I wasted all my energy being – building up to the game, and I'm like, uh, I can't give them everything I got because I'm being, like, exhausted sometimes. I don't know if you ever felt like that, but I, I feel like – no, I mean, <laughs> As a fullback, I gotta go. I get myself all hyped up because I want to. Like I'm ready to go. Like you know, run through somebody's chest, and I've learned, like in my Baltimore days, that you know uh, Ray Lewis is hype, and I don't know how he does it and can still play at a high level. But I'm trying to get hyped as Ray Lewis. Like what time is it? It's game time, right? What time is it? It's game time. So I'm, like, or, 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 or. I'm, I'm, I'm going crazy. Right. And then sometime special teams, I'm running down there, you know, blowing up the wedge, and then I'm a fullback. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Jamal, like, you good? I'm okay, Jamal. All right, you know, Jamal Lewis, not Jamal Anderson. Jamal right, Jamal. Right. I had the worst game because I couldn't catch up. I, right. I was way too hyped because it was a Monday night game. Right. For this primetime game, the team has to follow Kirk's lead. Just cool, right. calm, cool. collected. Know what you can do. Know, know what you're capable of. And just go out there and do it. Because, right. you know, all that rah rah to a certain extent. It can be too much, and you can't let the moment get bigger than you because this is a big moment. If right. you're able to go back to back and beat two playoff type teams, it's it's gonna it's it's like a stand- type, not just playoffs. They've been in the Super Bowl. No, yeah, yeah, playoff teams, yeah, playoff Super and Super Bowl type teams. Yeah, it's it's gonna mean so much to the organization, and and we're not trying to, you know, say we're not gonna win. But like you're right, even a close game, even a you know a, a one two a one three point loss that gives them. I still. I think we still have a lot of momentum about like, all right, this is we're going toe to toe with the champs. Right, like that's right. the caliber of, of team that we have here. So right. it's gonna be one hell of a game, man. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait for Sunday night either, man. I, I want. To, I just want to see that that energy in the stadium. Oof. I can't wait for that. I can't wait for that. I think it's time, man. Believe in Falcons. Been time, man. Believe in Falcons, man. I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna let you close it out, Mike, with your final thoughts, man, because sure. this this is the game to where I think last game. People might have not been tuned in all the way because of what happened in the first game. So they may have came at the end like, oh, what happened? But this game, 
you can't get a ticket to the Mercedes Benz Stadium. It's like two thousand. My, my, my girl Maria is getting a ticket. It's like two thousand dollars for like great seats. It's, it's like sold out, sold out, right. and it should be because we've now proven that we're one of the big boys. Oh, we want to prove that we're one of the big boys in consistency because right. you know you can't just do something like that one time. You got to show at this level. So the stadium better be rocking. People gonna be excited, but but man, I mean. Just, just, just give me your final thoughts, man. Because I can't my, wait. For this my, my, my final talk, my final thoughts is that I'm being a player in the locker room right now. Okay. We just won on Monday night. Yeah. We are coming back Sunday night. Okay. Back to back Super Bowl champs. Back to back. Who are you as a player? What kind of guy are you gonna be as a Falcon? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Are you a stud? Are you a stud? Are you not a stud? You know what I'm saying? Yep. Everybody watching again. Yeah. They thought last, last time again. Last, Last week was luck, right? Last week was a fluke. Now you got now you got back to back Super Bowl champs. Who are you yeah. now? Yeah. Who are you now? Yeah. That's my only message. Who are you now? And we're gonna see Sunday night. I like it.